Oh, Jared. <clears throat> uh, what do you think, Jared? A bit too uh, frivolous for the wife of a judge? Well, no, I'd say that depends on the judge or uh, even more on his wife. <laughs> I think Irene would love it. Good, good. <clears throat> um, speaking of Christmas presents, what do you say we collaborate on one for Maybelle Williams? I hope you're not asking me to set bail. Well, she's only a kid, you know. My answer is no. Well, why not? There's no proof as yet that she was actually Billy Joe's accomplice. You're right. But it would be the height of folly to let her out of that cell for even one minute. She's a wildcat, Jared, right out of the brush. And I trust her just about as much. And besides, with Billy Joe Gaines on the loose, it's asking for trouble. All right. All right, suppose you release her in my custody. What? I'll guarantee that she won't run away and that she won't jeopardize public safety. You can't make that guarantee. Possession of stolen goods is a bailable offense, Your Honor, and that's all she's been charged with. She's not worth it, Jared. Well, I suppose we just wait and see about that. All right. I'll release her in your custody. But how much you want to bet you'll regret it? I'll bet you a box of your favorite cigars. It's a bet, Counselor. Suppose you're waiting for me to thank you. Not necessarily. I'm just doing my job. Taking me home to spend Christmas with your family? Or is that just what you told the judge? Maybe you got some other plans for us, counselor. Like maybe you got some plans that you and your client might get together real cozy like and discuss the case. You know, I was going to buy some clothes for you. I imagine you're just about the same size as my little sister, Audra. Now you look, counselor. I never asked you to get me out of jail. Or to buy me anything, and I especially never asked you to be my lawyer. Well, that little pleasure was arranged for me by the Women's League. Then you were forced to defend me. Now, look, whether you like it or not, the law says you've got to have a lawyer. They asked me, and I accepted. It's that simple. Those old biddies at the League probably asked you to take me home with you, too. This wasn't your idea, was it? Maybelle, it's Christmas. Now, no matter how the arrangements were made, you're going to spend the holiday with my family. What do you say we make it a pleasant one? We can't, Counselor. Because nothing's good for me, nothing. Unless I'm with my Billy Joe. Hey, what are you... Listen to me. You try that just one more time. Maybe there won't be a next time, Counselor. Uh-huh. Let's go. Home or back to prison. You've got a real itch for jail, haven't you? Well, you keep this up and you'll spend a long, long time there. Now, maybe I can help you and maybe I can't. But if you escape, the Supreme Court won't be able to keep you out of San Quentin, understand? Now, let's go. 
All right, Counselor, but you may not have the pleasure of my company for very long. Billy Joe's on the loose, and he's coming for me, law on his trail or not. And when I'm with Billy Joe, nobody's gonna catch me! Oh, it's beautiful. It is kind, isn't it? Just beautiful. Went all the way to Bridge Peak for that spruce. Fought snow and blizzard. And wolves. And frozen feet. Oh, you boys are magnificent. It's kind of scrawny, isn't it? Scrawny! Uh, family, this is Maybelle Williams. Maybelle, this is my mother, my sister Audra. Nice meeting you, Miss Williams. And those two questionable gentlemen over there struggling with that piece of lumber are my brothers, Heath and Nick. Hello. Maybelle Williams. That's right. The Maybelle Williams. Uh, as Maybelle's attorney, I was able to uh, arrange for her to spend the Christmas holidays with us. Of course. I'm so glad that Jared could arrange that you wouldn't have to spend Christmas in... that you could visit with us. I'll bet you are. What's your boyfriend, Billy Joe Gaines, doing for this Christmas, Miss Maybell? Nick. It's all right. Billy Joe has things to do and places to go, Mr. Barkley. Oh, I'm sure he has. Like what bank is he robbing this week? I think that'll be enough, Nick. Perhaps you'd like to wash up. Maybe I'd better. It was a dusty ride out here. I'll show you to your room. Jared, you should have given us some warning. Or at least check with us to see what we'd say about you bringing home Billy Joe Gaines' girlfriend as a house guest. Or maybe I should freshen your memory on Billy Joe Gaines. Nick, lower your voice. This will be your room while you're here. I'm sure you'll find everything that you want. There's water in the pitcher for you to wash with. Now, ain't that fancy? A washing up place right in the bedroom. He wouldn't agree unless I told him she'd be in my custody. In other words, the judge doesn't trust her any more than I do. Jared, I want her out of here. Nick, I can hear you without yelling. When you're ready, I'll, I'll show you around if you'd like. Yes, sirree. It gives you a real warm feeling right in the pit of your stomach. How about you? You as glad to have me around as the rest of your family? I can't answer that yet. And I thought it'd be love at first sight. All the way around. What you're saying is she admits to being Billy Joe Gaines' girlfriend, a vicious, outright killer. Nick, we're not concerned at the moment with Billy Joe. Well, I am. And I have been concerned about Billy Joe for an awful long time. Nick, we know. We all feel the same. Peace, but... let me tell you about Billy Joe Gaines. This happened before you got here about a year ago, just Christmas last year. Billy Joe Gaines and his boys decided they would hold up the Stockton Bank. The teller, Dave Ross, a very good friend of mine, was just a little bit too slow about shoving the money into the satchel. Well, Billy Joe thought he was stalling. So he pumped two bullets into Dave Ross's stomach. And as Dave Ross lay there on the floor, bleeding to death, Billy Joe Gaines and his gang helped themselves to $10,000. It was Billy Joe's Christmas gift to Stockton that year. Jared, it's not easy to admit to mistakes. I know that. It's not easy for me. Why don't you take her back? Jared, maybe he's right. Heath, what do you think? I'm not sure. Gaines didn't gun down a friend of mine. But if he had, I might feel different. I vote for whatever Nick wants. Jared, what'd you bring her here for? <laughs> well, I, uh... I suppose I could tell you I did it because I thought I could do my job better if she were here. 
And? And it was Christmas. Yes, I suppose that's partly the reason. You know, it was a funny thing. I went to visit her in her jail cell this morning to discuss her case, find some basis to defend her. And all the time I was talking to her, she just kind of stared at me, defiantly. And it made me angry, because I felt guilty. Guilty that it was Christmas, that I was coming home to my family and leaving her there all alone in that cold cell. And the guiltier I felt, the angrier I got. So I left. And I told myself, after all, it wasn't any of my business. I didn't put her in there. I was merely trying to help her. And I told myself that all the way over to Judge Parker's office, where I promptly asked him to release her into my custody. Now, Nick, if you really want me to take her back to that cell, I'll do it. But somehow I don't think you do. All right, Jared. All right. And I hope we all have a Merry Christmas. Welcome. Does that include everybody? It sure includes us. Why, there isn't a bounty hunter or a low man in this state that wouldn't more than welcome us. Yeah, well, the way I figure it, we're about 100 miles from Stockton. We travel about 35 miles a day. We'll make it by Christmas. The only thing is, that pace isn't going to give you time to get her a present. You're wrong, friend. Me. I'm going to be your Christmas present this year. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> should fit you. Thanks. Good night, Maybell. Good night. Uh, Audra. Audra. Fancy name. Fancy bedroom. Everything fancy. I was kind of hungry, so I just thought I'd fetch me something to eat. Well, you're a little off course. The kitchen's over there. Oh. Well, thank you. Well, I can find it myself now. You can go back to whatever you were doing. Well, I'm kind of hungry myself. Let's see what's in the icebox. First, we'll put a little light on the subject. There we are. And then we'll see what we've got. Ah, beef, nice cold milk, freshly churned butter, 
Uh, there's some napkins and silverware and stuff like that in the cupboard over there. I'll get the bread. I think. Ah, there we are. Would your mom mind if we use these plates? <laughs> I don't think so. I was just kind of planning on grabbing a chunk of bread. This is kind of like a party. Well, I'm glad you think so. All right, Counselor. You got something on your mind? You're absolutely right. I want to discuss your case with you. What about my case? I told you everything there was. Well, let's see. You said that you didn't know the stuff that Billy Joe left in your room was stolen. Is that right? That's right. Five thousand dollars in large bills and a sack of gold dust. Look, whose side are you on? I'm just asking questions the district attorney is bound to ask. And we better have some pretty good answers. I told you what happened. I woke up one morning and I found that stuff in my room. And you haven't the faintest idea how it got there. Is that right? Sure is mighty good beef, but don't anyone around here believe in seasoning? How about you, counselor? Spice it up a little? Or you got enough spice in your life? You can trust me, Maybell. As a matter of fact, you have to trust me. You're not getting paid for defending me, are you? No. Well, then how do I know that you won't just go run into the judge, tell him that I admit I'm guilty and save everyone the trouble of a trial? I might just do that. If I decide that your best chance is to be thrown on the mercy of the court... The mercy of the court? You're still a minor, you know. Am I, Mr. Barclay? Legally, yes. Now, you look here. I don't want mercy. Not from the court, not from you, not from anybody. Thanks for the sandwich. Good night, Maybell. 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 That room where you were arrested, was that your room or Billy Joe's? It was our room. Well, he paid for it, if that's what you mean. That's exactly what I mean. So if he paid for it, legally it would be his room. And whatever he brought into it would be his too. Stolen property in your possession? Not by a long... Your sister forgot to leave me any slippers, so I just... I always dress for a midnight snack, Mr. Barkley. Good night, Mabel. Wait! I won't do it again. I don't expect you to believe that, but honestly, I won't do it again. I said good night. Good morning. Sleep well? Just fine. Oh, see you at breakfast. Maybe we'll go riding later. I won't be here later. Morning, Mabel. Do I have time for a cup of coffee? That depends on you. It's just a lousy cup of coffee. You gonna make a big deal out of that? I'm not talking about a cup of coffee. I'm talking about whether you go back to jail or not. 
the lawyer unpacked and ready. Last night you promised you wouldn't try it again. Did you mean that? Either you believe me or you don't. I'm not about to start begging you. You have Silas fix you some of the best scrambled eggs west of the Mississippi. Some more coffee? No, thanks, Silas. See you at dinner. All right, sir. Man says you make the best scrambled eggs west of the Mississippi. Is that what the man says? Can I trust him? If you can't trust him, then you can't trust nobody. Say, Billy Joe, I've been meaning to ask, what makes this Maybell so special? You really want to know? Yeah. Well, for one thing, she doesn't ask a lot of stupid questions. <gasps> you tell them, Billy. Hard and play hard. Lots of girlfriends and stuff like that, huh? Is, uh... Is Jared engaged to be married or anything like that? No, not that I know of. But then Jared's kind of mysterious about his women friends. I remember last summer he brought home a girl. I thought for sure she'd be the one. Oh, she was bright and beautiful. But why don't we find something else to talk about? I'm getting a little tired of your brother and his girlfriends. What's he trying to do? Well, that horse is wild. That's why we keep him out here by himself. He's trying to saddle break him. It's only one way to saddle break a horse, you ride it. Hey, cowboy! You afraid to mount that animal? Why, are you quitting so soon, cowboy? Billy Joe break three of those in half a morning just for the fun of it. Well, he does things his way and I do things mine. And both of you stay away from that pony, unless you think a broken back's funny. If you want, I'll show you the rest of the ranch. What are you doing? Come on, fella. Easy now. Come on. <coughs> Maybell, don't be foolish. Easy now. <coughs> Maybell.
Oh, is he? Nothing to worry about. Some bad bruises, but no concussion. Your mother's staying with her until she falls asleep. You can see her in the morning. Fine. Thank you very much for coming by, Doc. Merry Christmas to you. Same to you, Nick. Speaking of Christmas, why don't you drop by a little later for a little Christmas cheer, huh? Thank you. I will. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You know what we're having for dinner? I'm hungry as a bear. Before we start discussing dinner, Maybelle, I think you better do a little talking. Well? Well? What happened? Well, you're not going to believe me anyway, so why don't you just go ask your sister? Heath warned both of you girls not to get near that horse. Audra should have listened. I don't have to. Silas just told me. How's Audra? Audra, she'll be fine. You were with her when it happened. Your brother and I were just discussing that, Counselor. Seems he thinks it was all my fault. Was it? Well, now, it depends on how you look at it. The way he sees it, you get a strong rope and you find the nearest tree. Was it your fault, Mabel? Yes or no? Then again, you might just say that he's a hostile witness. Right, Counselor? You get your things together. I'm one step ahead of you, Counselor. I never unpacked. What actually happened, Nick? All I know is you could talk to her from now till next Christmas and never get a straight answer. Does anyone know what she actually did? What difference does it make? All we have to know is Audra was stopped by that horse and that girl couldn't care less. You may be right. Let's go. Mr. Barclay. Maybell, let's go. Take a drink of water. Go ahead. You want some? It's good. Real cold. I was going to argue that you should be given a second chance because way underneath, you're really a decent little lady that you'd never intentionally hurt anybody. <laughs> Ain't that nice. You're real tough, aren't you? Just too tough to admit that you might do something nice. Tell me something. Why didn't you run away when you knew you were in trouble? Maybe because I didn't think of it. Too bad you weren't around to advise me, counselor. Or was it because you just couldn't leave Audra lying there that you were more concerned about her than you were about yourself? Are you going to take me back to jail or are we going to just stand here talking? You know something, little lady? You're right. It doesn't do any good to talk to you. What you really need is to be turned over my knee and your backside tanned until you can't... You try it, mister. Don't tempt me. You touch me. Just you touch me. <laughs> Wait, I'm going to fix you for this if it's the last thing I do. When Billy Joe hears about this, you just wait. And I'm going to tell you something else. I don't want you to be my lawyer anymore. I'd rather rot in jail. I'd just as soon hang you. Well, I guess I can't take you to Stockton in that condition. Why not? Well, you... You might catch pneumonia. And die? Well, that just might save us all a lot of trouble. And cheat me out of winning this case. 
Don't you dare. Now you go on and get in the house and change your clothes for dinner. We're having some more of that smoked ham. Hey, Billy. What happens we get finished riding all this way and, and bust her out of jail and then find out she's changed her mind? Maybe got herself another bow. Well, that's a right smart question. Right smart. Now, ain't no need to get riled, Billy. Hayes and me is just having some fun. That's all. I'm Maybell's man. That's the way it's been, and that's the way it's gonna be. Well, sure, Billy. Why, why she took up with some other guy, or she changed her mind back to you real quick. Yeah. Or I might just kill that new bow of hers and change her mind for her. Jared, do you think this is the right place for the mistletoe? Well, why not? You hang it there every year. <laughs> well, ladies, I think that looks just fine. Yeah, that's pretty. Maybe I'll you finish it. I have a million other things to do. Do you really like it? I'm not too good at this. I never messed with Christmas trees before. Well, I think it could use something hanging right there. I is this okay? Oh, here, be careful. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I can say for myself, I... I sure can be clumsy. Thank you kindly. Oh, that's fine, Silas. Thank you. I'll get it. Oh, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. Come in. Come, Come in. in. Come Have I lost a day somewhere? No. We're riding up tomorrow to visit Bob and Cynthia and the grandchildren. So we brought the presents by today. Oh, well, come into the study. Yours are in there. Jared? Meg. Well, well, well. Merry Christmas. Guess what I got for you. Oh, no, you don't. I never step into the same trap twice. What trap? Well, it seems to me I fell for that last year. Once you tell me what you got me, then I have to tell you what I got you, right? Now, Jared, I never could wait for surprises. <laughs> well, I'm afraid you'll just have to wait until Christmas because that's the rule of the game. Come on over here. I want you to meet our house guest. Meg Travis, this is Maybell Williams. How do you do? How do you do? Well, that certainly is a beautiful Christmas tree. Thanks to Maybell. Meg, without any further ado, we better be on our way. We still have a lot of visiting to do. Jared. Ah, uh, yes. With pleasure. said when they told me the price.
Bless you, Brother Nick. Now you can just keep the one you borrowed from me. Bless you, Brother Jared, for this nice saddle. Now you can just return the saddle you borrowed from me. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Jared. You're welcome, Heath. Uh, just don't shoot it off in the house. Thank you, all of you. I'm going to be the best man and woman in prison. Oh, Jared, it's lovely. It's the most beautiful dress I've ever seen. Unhand that young lady. Now, isn't that just like a woman getting all set to borrow it? Before Maybell has even had a chance to try it on. For me? But what would I be needing a dress like this for? I mean, what a dumb idea. You know, you know, for a lawyer, you're not very smart. I better find myself another lawyer. Or I'm gonna end up spending the rest of my life in jail. Find out. A lawyer. Name of Barkley. Got her out on bail. He's got her out of his ranch right now. Just a few miles out of town. Well, now. <laughs> that's right nice of him. Says there's the trouble of breaking her out of jail. <laughs> Boy, howdy, don't they look pretty? Mm -hmm. Is that a question? It's a fact. <laughs> Wish all your friends a very merry Christmas for me. All right, come on, let's go. And have a good time. Bye, Mother. Where's Mabel? Here I am. Do I look all right? I think you look lovely. So do I, and so will everybody else. Thank you. Aren't you coming with us? No, I'll entrust you and Mother with my season's greetings for everybody. I have some work to do. I'll be out in a minute, Mabel. Jared, I think she's falling in love with you. Well, maybe. You know, you help them out or you try their case for them, and suddenly your father, minister, and lover all rolled into one. I've run into it before, and with women more mature than Maybell. But in this particular case, it doesn't worry you. In this particular case, the only thing that worries me is that if I get her free, will it be a worthwhile freedom, or will it be a license for her to run back to Billy Joe Gaines? for me. Yes? Looking for Maybell Williams? Miss Maybell? Yeah, she's my sister. Get her. I'm sorry, she's out visiting with the rest of the family. Where out visiting? If you care to wait, I'll call Mr. Barkley. Silas, who is it? Name's Billy Joe Gaines. Billy, 
I'd always heard you were a pretty smart kid. But coming here was a pretty dumb thing to do. Just shut up and tell me where she is. Gladly. As a matter of fact, I'll do better than that. I'll draw you a map. Now, let's see, Silas. There must be what? About three ranches within a radius of 50 miles where she might be? That's right, Mr. Barkley. And then again, there are at least a dozen homes right outside of Stockton. She might be in any one of those. All right, Mr. Lawyer, sir. When does she get back? Whenever they get through visiting, I imagine. Unless, of course, it gets too late and they decide to stay the night. All right. Why don't we just take it easy and wait till she gets back? How many lawmen do you figure are out looking for you, Billy? On Christmas Day? Probably all shoving turkey into their fat faces. Possibly. But then again, wouldn't you be a lot safer heading up country? Or maybe south to the border? I didn't get where I am playing it safe, mister. <laughs> and where are you, Billy? A $5,000 reward on your head and two steps ahead of a posse and a rope. Well, that's one step more than I need, Counselor. How is Mabel? She talk much about me? She's mentioned you? Yeah, that she did. I've done a lot of thinking about her, too. You know, Billy, if you really thought anything about her, you'd clear out of here right now without her. And let her go to jail? Let her stand trial. She has a chance that way. She doesn't with you. She's been waiting for me. Maybe she was waiting for you, but not anymore. All she's waiting for now is a chance to stand trial and be cleared. You seem pretty sure of yourself, Counselor. Pretty sure of my girl. You think I'm wrong, huh? Well, why don't we let the lady make a choice? Well, you better pray I don't do that, Counselor. Because if you mixed her up so bad she decided to stay... I'll kill you. Corey Hayes. Well, look at our Miss Maybell. Billy Joe's waiting on you in the house. Better not take any chances, please, Mrs. Barkley. That's real good advice. Go get Billy Joe. Mm -hmm. Hope you don't mind waiting, spell man. Waiting, Billy. Goodbye, lawyer. You try to stop us or follow us, I'll kill you. Silas, get my gun. Hey, that's a fancy dress you got on there. It's all right. Well, it's a good thing they treat my girl kindly. Come on, let's ride. She's 
boys with Billy Joe and two others. They went toward the North Ridge. Right there. Keep those hands nice and clear. Lawyer, I told you not to come after us. Well, now, I didn't find that particularly good advice. Drop those gun belts. No. Now, I'm going to ask you just one time. Drop those belts and turn around. You start shooting, and you're not going to hit all three of us. You ain't that good. That may be. But the first one will be right between your eyes, Billy boy. Like I said, you ain't that good, Laura. Maybe I'll you ride out of there. Go on, Billy Joe, run! Maybe I'll get out of there! was for Billy Joe to come get me. Not you, your family, or any of your fancy Christmas stuff could make me want different. Like you said, lawyer, let the lady make her choice. cigars, sir. I hate to say I told you so. Go ahead, Judge. Say it. Say it all you want. Lord knows I've said it to myself enough. Jared, I've been a lawman for better than 40 years. Sheriff, marshal, prosecuting attorney, now judge. I've seen a thousand Billy Joes, a hundred Maybells. And when I was younger, I, I tried to give them all a chance. Spoon feed them on the milk of human kindness. Turn them into respectable citizens. But I learned my lesson, just like you've learned yours. So the next time you find just find yourself wanting to. Mabel! What happened? Well, I I knew that even Billy Joe had to go to sleep sometime, so I just waited for my chance, and here I am. All right, what do I do now? Just tell the sheriff I've come back? No, you come with me. There's a man who thinks he's met you a hundred times. I'd just like to see the expression on his face when he meets you for the first time. Seward to that concoction, cousin. Where'd you get him? That poor fella. Well, he fell amongst thieves, and we happened along the trail just in time to save him. I heard some shooting. Oh, well, Brother Copper here was quick enough of mine to get a shot off at him, and uh, <laughs> he sure sent them robbers off to making footprints. Footprints? Didn't them robbers have no horses? Yeah. No. Ali Kay, you go look after that poor fella.
Black spots in his eyes ain't too big. Ain't too little, neither. Lost some hide alongside his head, but ain't did it in much. He ain't sneezing, that's a good sign. But if and he starts breathing bubbly, we're gonna lose him. Pinto, get me hot water, lots of it. Pinto, do like she says. We can't have this young fella dying off on us. Just like them rich folks to pull a trick like that on us. Oh, now, Brother Copper, rich folks ain't all bad. They're just all rich. An affliction which ain't attacked us recent. But there just might be a plague of it coming on. You take this rich man here for an instant. His family is going to be so happy to get him back, they just might offer us some nice reward for being good Samaritans. Like maybe some money. Now listen to me, everybody. We're going to be the nicest, gentlest, humblest folks they ever met in their born days. Cousin Cleek, you get that wheel back on the wagon. Ain't going to take us very fur. It'll take us fur enough. Danny, how are we going to find his house? We'll swat his horse on the rump and follow it. Mr. Barkley, mm -hmm. Mr. Johnson wants to see you about something. He's out by the barn. Thank you. I can't find anything wrong with him. Neither could I. Yet I know one thing. This horse could never throw Mr. Heat. Maybe he's with Audra. No, ma'am. She rode to town for the mail, so I figured I'd... No, no. You stay off horses for another week like the doctor said. Saddle mine and... How do you do? We'd appreciate some information if you feel so kindly. If I have it. Well, traveling down country, we run across some poor fellow done fell in among thieves. And we just couldn't leave him there. Did you lose anybody? Where is he? He's in the wagon, ma'am. Yeah, allow me to point the way. Heath! And he is yours. He's my son. Would you help me get him inside, please? You know, copper. How bad is it? The kind of ornery crease, ma'am. He must have surprised some rustlers butchering a cow, and they shot him. We just happened up in time to scare him away, oh, poor fellow. Well, I appreciate your help, Mr. Cade is the name, ma'am. John Wesley Cade, but everybody calls me daddy. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Ain't there any other men about to help? We'd hate to mess up your carpets. Our men are out on Roundup. Oh, but they'll, uh, they'll be back shortly. Now this here is Alley K. He's right fair with herbs and roots. Kept him alive so far. She'd be happy to help with the tendon. Thank you. Please be careful. Follow me. Do we hear the lady? Ain't no other men around. They'll be back shortly. How long is shortly? We'll use the back stairs. It's quicker. Be careful. Anything I can do, good lady? If I need any help, I'll call you. Thank you, ma'am. Man, oh, man. A big house like this might even get a bigger reward than we first thought. You ought to see at least a thousand dollars. Little lady ought to be that grateful. Well, what if and she ain't? An interesting thing, though. Ain't no men around, except for a servant and a wrangler with only one good arm. Real interesting. If we can only find out when the other men are coming back. We need two days to get out of the area. I've never been in a house like this before. I bet you it's just chock full of all kinds of Jim Dandies. That lady sure cuts a fine figure of a woman. Oh, quality. Mm. I've always had a hankering for quality. Just never had a chance to indulge it. Might get that chance. No. 
quality ain't like some creek squaw you catch all alone out in the brush. You gotta handle it different. If you need me, ma'am, I'll be down at the corral. Thank you. Ma'am, how's that poor fellow? He'll be all right. I want to thank you again for your help. Well, just knowing we've been a help is thanks enough. Please accept this as a token of my appreciation. Huh? Oh, no, ma'am. We didn't do this for no reward. We just wanted to help that poor fellow. Well, thank you, ma'am. Well, I, um... I guess because of the delay, you'd, you'll be wanting to get back on the trail again. Well, actual, ma'am, this was supposed to be our day of rest. And our, our wagon has a wheel close to collapsing. So, uh... Well, uh, you may spend the night in the barn. You'll find a spare wagon wheel there. Help yourself. Good lady. You're a flat-out saint. One hundred dollars in a wagon wheel. Shh. That's a sorry reward for saving her son's life. our new home and get on that wagon wheel. Mother? 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 Yes, dear? Did you have the raw hairs on back of the house? Yes, I know. Heath has been hurt. They brought him in. I told them they could spend the night in the barn. Heath hurt? What happened? Well, he has a scalp wound. They said he was shot by rustlers. I don't think he's in any immediate danger, but he's still unconscious. I want you to ride back to town and bring out Dr. Murrah. I'm on my way. There was no mail, but there was a telegram from the boys. From Mr. Nick? I hope he says he's coming back tonight. Heard brought good price. Men need rest. Jared wants us to spend the rest of the week in San Francisco. Home on the 17th. Heath can handle things. Love, Nick and Eugene. Tackling's got uh, 18 wall arm, and Saddles is on three of them. And there's 18 beds in the bunkhouse, and, and the blankets has gone off and all but one of them. And all adds up to everybody being gone, except for the people in the house and the wrangler with a broke arm. If there's only some way of knowing when these are coming back. Well, the quality lady said they'd be back shortly. Looks like we're going to have to settle for a hundred dollars in the wagon wheel. We ain't ready to give up yet. Ah, so that's where that little yellow-haired gal kited off to. Get a doctor, I bet you. I best go up there and see how that poor fellow's coming along. Lupe. Lupe. Tu estas aqui? It's all right, it's all right. You just be quiet. Acuestate cerca de mi. Quero abasarte. Dame un besito. Oh, Mr. Heath, you better not do that. 
You, you just lay back down and rest now. No sign of consciousness? None. And he doesn't have a fever. His breathing seems regular. Patty. Hello. Put that bandage on. I did. It's filthy. Well, it may look that way, but I boiled it before I put it on. Any sign of his coughing? No. No coughing or breathing bubbling. Good. There's no internal bleeding. Probably suffered a contusion is all, no skull fracture. What's this poultice? A uh, clover wart and mare's tail. I cleaned it up with soap and whiskey. Yeah. Well, you might have done worse. I know that. I'm a healer, too. Are you? Order some hot water, please. Has he shown any sign of coming around? Well, in a way. A little while ago, he was talking in Spanish. I don't know what he said. I don't think he knows neither. Well, we'll just wash him up, take a better look. Can I help you? I was just wondering how that poor fellow's doing. I'm sure he's doing fine, thank you. Best go up and see for myself. Serious, but not critical. Be strong, young man. Just see that he stays in bed. You know, Victoria, if they were Russians, they were pretty desperate or stupid. Think they'd get away with something like that in broad daylight? Well, now, how is that poor fella? Who's this? This is Mr. Cade's a name. But everybody calls me Daddy. It was us what saved him. Well, Victoria, I'm gonna have to go on down to Mrs. Henderson. They're begetting again. Real begetters. But I'll stop in on my way back uh, this evening about six o'clock. I'll have some dinner for you. Oh, no thanks. Well, if you excuse me, I'd like to talk to uh, Mrs. Barclay and Audra. Alone? Oh. Oh, sure. We'll wait outside the door. These people are raw hiders. It ever occurred to you that they might have shot Heath themselves? I thought of that possibility, but it doesn't seem likely they'd shoot him and then bring him here. Well, maybe you're right. Oh, that girl seems like a good nurse, but uh, clean her up a little bit, make her a little more sanitary. Well, I'll stop in on my way this evening. Well, never mind, Victoria, I know the way out. Oh, thanks, Howard. I'll walk you down, Doc. You've been on the trail a long time. Perhaps you'd like to freshen up. Freshen up? Or take a bath? Oh, surely. And I have a dress that might be more uh, comfortable. Dress? Mm-hmm. You mean... I could actually try it on? You may keep it if you like. Oh, I ain't never had a dress before. I, I guess I'd better go down to the creek and flake off a few inches of prairie dust. You won't have to go to the creek. The bathtub is right here in the house. I uh, thank you, Doc. I said, thank you, Doc. Good day.
never took a real down earth bath before. Daddy did, that one time. He used to talk about it around the campfire. Your father must have led a, an interesting life. Well, Daddy ain't my father. My folks was killed by Indians when I was about four or five. These people just picked me up. Guess I couldn't find no place to leave me. I sure am tired of living like a rattlesnake. Run for shade when it's hot and hit for sunshine when it's cold. I was gonna leave several times. But leave to where? I mean, what can I do? Daddy can do sums and read some, but he won't teach no one else how to. Daddy thinks I'm gonna marry Pinto. Well, the day before I do that, I'm gonna take me a horseshoe knife and... Daddy says he took his bath in a real gold bathtub. Bet it wasn't nice as this. Daddy lies a lot. Remember if I left Nick's telegram here on the table? Yes, ma'am. You left it right there on, t on the table. And I didn't take it. Oh, well, then I must have moved it someplace else without thinking. No, ma'am. They took it. They know the men are not getting back tonight, don't they? Sent from San Francisco on the tenth. It was yesterday. There ain't gonna be no men around here for the rest of the week. Ooh, in that time we can loot this place and get clean to Canada. Not so fast, my fine feather jackass. I happen to know that the doctor is gonna be back here around six o'clock. He's probably gonna keep a close look in on that poor fellow for a while. Let's just kill him. You don't kill no doctor. People miss him too quick, and they keep asking after him. No, they'll be on our trail in a minute. That is right. No, we just got to wait until he spreads his visits out of mine. Now, we got to have at least two days for a getaway. They can track us over this soft ground, but we get up north in shale and limestone country. No wagon tracks. But, meanwhile... Ain't no reason why we shouldn't enjoy the quality of this here place. No, we just gotta move slow like. Creased you with a bullet when we brung you in. When did all this happen? About five or six hours ago. Uh, who's Loopy? You know her? Why'd you ask? Well, you was talking about her. What'd I say? What do you think you said? Well, there's a lot of things I hope I didn't say. Now, you're supposed to stay in bed. Well, I gotta finish telling those cows and... Allie Kay, why don't you go get some rest? I'll sit with him. He might need some tending. Well, I'll call if there's any need. Thank you. Here, 
here, here, here, here. Now, what set this off? It ain't fair, Daddy. It ain't fair. We all gotta be a mite patient. Before long, we'll all get new clothes, but we gotta go slow with quality. Now, you're supposed to be up there with that young fella. You come down here just to kick up a fuss? No, Daddy. I just came down to tell you I overheard Miss Barclay tell Silas to go get the eggs. Oh. No eggs? Well, there should be four or five dozen. Miss Barclay, those hen nests are as naked as jaybirds. Well, they just didn't hatch and fly away. Lady, we seen you were short-handed, so we collected the eggs for you. As long as you're so hospitable, the least we could do is a few chores. Thank you. I'd be happy to have the boys slot the hog for you. If you provide the slots, we just don't have none left over. Mr. Johnson can take care of the hogs. Oh, fine, fine. Will you just let me know anything you want done around here, because I'm a plum one-eyed jack? Silas, uh, put a dozen eggs in the kitchen and bring the rest back. Yes, ma'am. Oh. Lovely and generous. Hey. Oh. That's a fine iron. Never seen the likes of that. Oh. Hate to mention it, ma'am, but uh, uh, your kind generosity caused me a mite of embarrassment. How? Oh, remember that dress you give to Allie Kay? Well, the other woman got plumb jealous. And I was just wondering if you, uh, if you had something else around here that was, uh, well, raggedy, but pretty. It might even things up a bit, you know. Oh, I'm sure I can find something. case since we got here. Spends all her time up in the room with that feller. I know what's going on. Quality like him ain't like to take to Alley K. Shined up, she looks right fair. I bet that feller taint sick tall. Jess up there hanky panking my fiance. I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna kill him now. After you do, you best reload and blow your brains out because if and you don't, I will. I gotta think me up a plan. Ain't nobody gonna mess it up. Allie Kay ever tell you she was gonna marry you? No. You mean you got your eye on her? No, I'm too old to start educating a child. I need me a woman of quality, money. Hey, Daddy. Why? That doctor just rode back in. Not so. That means all the folks will be upstairs for a spell. It'll give you all a chance to see what you can find in the house. I'll warn you when your time is up. I thought that might rouse you. Ask a feather, though. Oh, boy, how to get that thing away. I'm just doing what's good for you. Allie Kay, the doctor's here. Hi. Hi. Welcome back. Well, if it was a trip I could have done without. How do you feel? It was fine until I woke up. Hi, Doc. How are you? I'm good. You're looking better. Thanks, but my head feels like it's about to fall off. Did you notice any bleeding from his ears or nose? No. How about you? You remember anything that happened? Last thing I remember is eating breakfast. That's not unusual. 
Well, your heart check's out all right, but I'll tell you one thing, Heath. You're going to have a bad headache for several days. And there may be lapses of consciousness, so don't leave this bed. We'll see that he gets plenty of liquids. Oh, Victoria, when I was here last, did uh, I leave my watch? No, I didn't see it. Yes, I was sure I had it here, but when I got to the Hendersons, it was gone. Well, I'll be doggone. This must be your watch. Doc, I found a line on the ground outside. Probably fell out of your pocket whilst crawling into your rig, huh? Thanks. Always happy to oblige. Well, how are you, young fella? I'm the one found you and brung you in. Thank you. Well, no need for me to hang around. I'll be back the end of the week. Uh, just change his bandages every day and let him have a lot of peace and quiet. I'll be glad to walk the doctor down for you, ma'am. That won't be necessary. No, no trouble at all. Mm -hmm. Well, Victoria, the worst part is over. So just see that he gets plenty of rest and quiet. All right, I'll see to it. And thank you very much, Howard, for coming out again. That's right, Doc. We flat out appreciate it. Like I said, plenty of rest and quiet. Good evening. If you'll excuse me, Mr. Daddy, call me Daddy like everybody else. If you'll excuse me, I have to get dinner. I can have Cousin Ruthina fix your fiddles for you. There's no reason for a quality woman to be bothering about cooking. It's stuff. no bother. I enjoy it. Well, you just might like what Cousin Ruthina can conjure up. If there is one thing I do not enjoy, it's having anybody in the kitchen while I'm preparing a meal. Oh. Well, good lady, I guess we done kind of took advantage of your hospitality. We were just so happy about that poor fellow up there getting better. We'll be leaving first thing in the morning, and if you ain't awake, thanks for everything. <laughs> Would you like something to eat? Maybe some water. Man, oh man, look at that. It's a real cartridge bearing rifle. Did you get them all? Well, all I seen. Uh, there's all hung in them cabinets in that room with the wood wall. Yeah. I didn't have time to check every nothing, Cranny. Hey, Daddy. Look what tall I found. Yeah. Quality, Daddy. Real quality. Well, I bet they got more. Oh, this here's enough for tonight. Beats that pot whiskey, don't it, Daddy? Mmm. Sure do, Pino boy. Mrs. Barkley must have left the Winchester here by mistake. Uh -huh. One thing I can't stand is a nosy wrangler with a broke arm. Oh, it looks like we don't dilly daddy around no more. We're going to have to kill off all them folks tonight. Oh, did you make that stuff or scoop it off an alkali pond? I guess you'd rather have tamales and chili. We have to keep getting back to that. Well... You sure talked soft when you thought I was that loopy. You act a whole lot different, too. Well, I never told anyone I spent my life alone in a cave. Now, what are you driving at? You just won't understand, will you? I understand one thing. 
You saved my life out there. One nothing. Quite a bit to me. When I get the chance, I mean to find the proper way to thank you. I don't know why you're having us cover him up if we're leaving here tonight anyway. When I change my mind, we're going to take off first crack at dawn unless something come along to change our plans. Uh, I always was born to live good. Jack my heels up on a fine cherry wood table, read part of a good book. And if I don't like it, I tear it up. Yeah. I ought to have me some fine soft clothes. And if they don't fit me, I just tear them off. <laughs> Ain't never had a chance to do that before. Now, Doc won't be back for a couple of days. Men won't be back for a week. Oh, I'm going to set myself down on fine swans down, sofa cushions, drink good liquor, smoke me a big cigar. And when that pretty quality lady comes down, her eyes flashing, I'm going to have a surprise for her. You going to shoot her? No. I'm going to pop her the question. Ooh, Daddy, she gonna spit right in your face. Then I'll shoot her. Let's go. Copper shot you. There was no other bushwhackers. Do you realize what you're saying? I growed up with them, but but I ain't like they are. You just gotta believe me. Then will you help me? Just tell me what to do. Find out what they're up to. some fancy hand irons to boot out there in that barn. And that's not all we're going to took before this night's out. They're going to catch you before you got a chance to breathe twice. Oh, but he's going to catch us. There won't be nobody left to put on a chase. First, I got to have a talk with that quality lady. Well, I better be going. Going? That fella upstairs, he finished his broth and he wanted me to get him some cold milk. Cleo! You ain't never brung me no cold meal. You keep that voice down. Let's get him. If he's up to taking food, he could be dangerous. No. He's still fuzzy. Are you sure? He ain't barely got enough strength to set up. Good. Well, I better hurry. Allie Kay. He's going to get suspicious if I don't show back up.
Sally Kay? Oh. Hello, Pinto. You ain't gone spoony on that fella up there, have you? Of course not. Or is it cold milk? Oh, milk? Well, it was curdled. I best be getting back up there before he wonders what's keeping me. Way you repay my hospitality? Oh, I'm sorry about the mess, ma'am. Good lady, sit down. I've been wanting to talk to you. I'd be very interested in what you have to say. Ever since I seen you, you leapt on my eyes like a variable angel. Now, I ain't a bad figure of man. I've been a widower now on the three whole months. It's starting to crimp me. You're a widow. How's about you and me getting widowed? You, you could do a lot worse. I'd have to think that over. Would you excuse me, please? I'd like to speak to my daughter privately. Oh, of course, ma'am. <laughs> I was afraid of this. One of them has on Johnson's shirt. We'll get Heath and get out of here. There! Hey! Where are you going? Were you serious when you asked me to marry you? Why, well, I sure was, ma'am. Well, then I'm going upstairs to change. After all, a lady can't accept a proposal dressed like this, can she? <laughs> yeah! Man of money! Ain't there's gonna be a wedding? Come on, I'll no copper. All of you, let's clean this place up now. She's all right. We think they killed Johnson. They plan to kill all of us. Now, we're silent. In his room, I'll get him. Get to the barn, and I'll cover you from the window and meet you later. All right. Cousin Pete, get that sofa up right there. Hey, Pino, Pino, pick up the chair. Hey, you put that sausage back where you find it. Now, go on. Come on, Ruthina. Pick up them flowers. Now, we gotta red up this room nice for the wedding. Miss Parker, I'm so glad to see you. You know what? Yes, yes, I know all about it. Hurry up. Looks like your bride's eloping without you. Just seen her scoot out the kitchen door. Wally, underhanded. All right, Pinto, you can take that fella now. Copper, you got your servant man. Cousin Cleek, you come with me.
I know you're in here. I'm going to nurse don't live far from here. Yeah, it's on the way to town. We should warn you. Why? Well, if you're going to come and see me, I'd like you to have to go out of your way. Well, I'll come to see you even if I don't have to go to town. happened. What do you mean, what else happened? I mean, did you get the mud out of the sinkhole? Did you get the north section fenced? Hey, what about the dam on the Walnut Creek? I don't know why it is. We leave for a little while. You go off gallivanting, the whole place goes to pot. Well, I was flat on my back. Didn't the groundbreaker fall? 